Welcome back, teachers. That's it's been a while. Yeah, right. It has. I guess that the last video we recorded was in oh my god, November, man. Oh wow. Yeah, it's been a like minute, right? Eight months minute. now. It's a pleasure to be back with my great friend Bruno. Okay, we're gonna be discussing a few things related to teaching as usual, right? So welcome back to the channel. We are really, really happy to be back and to have you with us. How the Viet. Valtin, so today we scheduled to talk about um, reading. So I feel that a good way to start a conversation about teaching a skill, and do know that if you're watching this, we're going to have videos about how to teach reading, writing, listening, speaking, grammar, vocabulary, so it's coming, um, would be to discuss the basic principles regarding the skill. I think my, my number one thing when talking about reading is get students to read. Um, I, I know this might sound uh, silly and obvious, but it's very common for teachers to dislike reading because maybe students dislike uh, some reading classes and then teachers just assign the texts for homework and then students don't do any kind of reading in class but they do the reading always at home. And then it's unsupervised, it's not strategic, it's not focused, it's not intensive um, as it should be. Uh, I feel that extensive reading, which is not what we do in class, it's when students are allowed to choose what they're going to read and they read for pleasure, they read for fun. This obviously can be done um, after class hours. But the work that we do in class is reading that is, uh, well, not for fun. It's reading that is designed to be used as an exercise. And, well, when it comes to exercise, it has to be focused. It has to be strategic. It has to be intense. Otherwise, it's, um, well, not as effective as it could be. Yeah, when you go to, like, you take a CELTA, TESO, sorry, TESO, whatever, you're always going to learn. Mm -hmm. Students need to read for a reason. So you ask the question, you, you have a gist question first, and then they are going to read and they mm -hmm. have a reason to understand. But uh, the problem is that how often do you see gist questions in materials or that the teachers will devise, whatever, that... They're a little patronizing, like the, the student reads the first paragraph, they know the answer, or mm -hmm. or like because if it is a gist question, though, like they really need to read the whole thing, and it's not as easy to to create a uh, to create such a question mm -hmm. to think of such a question. I, I think we can, uh, for instance, when, when, when I say that uh, reading in class uh, often feels like uh, an exercise, and, and, and I think the analogy with, uh, I don't know, uh, an, an athlete training for the Olympics, for example, uh, there are lots of exercises that this athlete uh, goes through that is not, that doesn't resemble uh, the performance they're going to uh, uh, well, for lack of a better word, to perform at the, the the real thing right in uh and then quotation marks uh in real life uh i feel that there is a lot of value in uh exercising and doing uh, an activity that is not real life like but focused on developing or trying out a new strategy for a new reading strategy that you didn't have or that you didn't exercise as much and then uh, I feel that uh, you are focusing on uh, a specific strategy that uh, with the belief that developing several uh, individual reading strategies, this student will be able to use these strategies in outside classroom environments to read better and to become a better uh, a better reader. I, I think it's fine. Uh, when it comes to just questions, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there. 
Um, some just questions, they definitely can be uh, patronizing, as in you ask students to read and then they find out in 10 seconds the answer to your question. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of gamify that. Um, the other day, uh, a, a pair of students of mine, I, have, I teach this, this group, they are teachers in a bilingual school, and we were, uh, we were going to read a LinkedIn post by a professional who works on helping teachers design better courses, better asynchronous courses. And when you look at the post, you don't know that this woman is selling something, right? She mm. starts, uh, you know, that, that general storytelling, like... Uh, mm. sometimes people design courses and, and, and you don't really know, but when you get to the middle and end section of the text, you kind of realize, ah, okay, she's selling a consultancy service, right? Um, my just question was, uh, why did uh, this person, I think it's Sarah something, why did Sarah write this text? The which, is, right? which is a just question. Right, it is, it is, but it is. so that they don't have too much time to read, and then uh, the question become uh, silly or too simple. I said, "You guys have eight seconds to find the answer," which is really uh, skimming the text, just looking at it and say, "Okay, this is this is an advertisement," right? Um, which great, I great think, task. Uh, task. which I think is an interesting strategy to have before Absolutely. you read something and waste your time, being able to look at it for eight seconds, six seconds, and say, "Okay, this is an ad. I don't want to read it." And, and and isn't that exactly the point of how like uh, how you read in real life? People who are like uh, they're not uh, very, you know. They don't read much in, in, in their lives, in their daily, you know, mm -hmm. life. They will open a website to, you know, check, you know, the, the headlines, the, the, the news there. But, like, how many of those headlines are they actually going to click and mm -hmm. read? Maybe they're, like, putting to supporters and they want to check who <laughs> scored the goal, you know. And, mm -hmm. then, but, and, and then it's like, okay, in that kind of reading... Is that person looking for details or is that person mm -hmm. actually skimming through the text, mm -hmm. right? So um, basic principles, like, oh, okay, give me a reason to read, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but what reason is that? How realistic is the reason? I love the, the example you gave because uh, as you progress, as students progress in the CFR levels and they go to higher levels, they, they are supposed to understand intention. They're mm -hmm. supposed to understand tone, right? So, for example, uh, uh, say you give them a text in which there is irony, mm -hmm. right? Uh, well, like, and then it's a C1 level course, and then students are supposed to grasp that, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of task is extremely interesting. And mm -hmm. for a just question, that would be amazing. I'm sorry, this discussion was... Very, very long, so we had to cut the video into two parts. Uh, Bruno and I were, were getting excited because we're back. We haven't recorded in a long time, so you will forgive us for that, for the long, the length of the video, right? Uh, but I'll see you for the second part right after this one okay. next week. <laughs> see you.